Recently, we did a video on the channel discussing the soundtracking of animation. And in the meantime, Lewis has made a fun new animation that has, as of yet, no soundtrack. You can download the video file for this animation at the link in the video description. If you want to make a soundtrack for this or use it in any video projects of your own, feel free to do so. And if you do soundtrack it and you're interested, you can send your high quality audio file to media at makenoisemusic.com and we can add it to the animation archive for potential use in videos on our channel as well. So today we're gonna do a little exploration of the inner workings of ring modulation with the Wogglebug and the Modumix. Both of these modules contain circuits that we refer to as ring modulators, and both could be said to be imperfect or flavorful approaches to that concept. For me, the idea of a ring modulator is easiest to understand when we think it in terms of balanced modulator or four quadrant multiplier. You could see a thorough explanation in the Timbre Farm video series from a couple years back. The gist being that the signals at the two inputs are multiplied together, taking their polarity into account. In other words, it's a bipolar VCA, which can attenuate and invert via voltage control at the modulator input. If we look at how numbers of different sign work when multiplied together, we can see that when two positive or two negative numbers are multiplied together, the result is always positive. And when one is positive and the other is negative, the result is always negative. So in other words, when they're both the same, it's positive, and when they're different, it's negative. The Wogglebug uses the so-called digital ring mod that has been used on various synthesizers in the past, including the Korg MS series. This ring modulator is in fact an exclusive OR logic circuit. Assuming the inputs are pulse waves, it can actually create basically the same results as a four quadrant multiplier. Exclusive OR takes two input gates and it outputs a gate only when one of the inputs is high, but not both. If both are high or both are low, the output is low. This result is actually the precise inverse of the balanced modulator, where the output is high when both are the same. However, when used on audio signals, there's no difference in sound when a waveform is inverted, so we can consider this to be a simple digital ring modulator. Again, this is all assuming waveforms that are pulse waves. In other words, waves that only have maximum and minimum output values. Another way to put that is that the values are binary, which is why we use the word digital when describing this ring mod. And this is not the same as digital signal processing, microprocessors, coding of firmware, etc. Let's hear how the mod demix sounds with square waves at the input. We'll use the gate outputs of two audio rate cycling maths channels. Now, because the balanced modulator needs a bipolar modulation signal to hit all four quadrants, we need to offset the modulator downward. To do this, I'll put dummy cables in the channel one and channel four attenuated outputs. We'll run the modulator through channel three, turn its output to max, and then offset it downward with channel two. So that it's bipolar at the sum. We'll take the sum output to modulate the other wave. Mult a channel of Rene to the both inputs. The 
change the frequency of the two oscillators. Note that these inputs are uncalibrated, so they drift in and out of tune across the frequency range. We can actually hear the individual sidebands going both up and down in frequency as you do this sweep. Next, let's hear how the woggle bug does it. If we, turn... if we turn the external input fully to ego, we can get the two oscillators to hit roughly the same frequency. And let's listen to them mixed together in the Modumix. There's the smooth VCO and the woggle VCO. Changing the clock rate can knock them out of phase momentarily. Now let's use the Modumix to ring mod them together. As we will soon hear, the Wogglebug ring mod outputs only pulse waves and interprets the inputs as pulse waves. But the smooth VCO output is not a pulse wave. It's a shark tooth shape, and that will be one key to the difference in sound between the Modumix and the Wogglebug, even when using the same waves as a source. So here's what they sound like when modulating each other in the Modumix. And let's hear the output of the Wogglebug ring mod. First thing I notice is that it sounds an octave up, mixing it with the Modumix ring mod version gives a richer sound. Not only is there more nuance to the Modumix's version of ring modulation, but there's also a non-linearity in the sound when the modulator approaches the zero point. This means that the Modumix is a pretty imperfect ring modulator, especially when using curved waves, and this gives it a good deal of its distinctive character. Around the Make Noise office, we call this crossover distortion. If you have another ring modulator hanging around, you might notice when patching it that it sounds different from both the Wogglebug and the Modumix. Let's also try cranking up the id a little with the woggle size turned down. This lets us create cascades of notes. If we turn up woggle size, we get a little bit of slew as the woggle bug VCO catches up to the smooth VCO. Now let's try the same while listening to the Wogglebug ring mod output. Notice how there are gaps in the sound now. This is an audible artifact of the Wogglebug ring mod's binary nature. It can't read and respond to the full shape of the shark tooth wave on the smooth VCO. So the VCOs cancel each other out on the output far more than they do with the analog ring mod. This means we get this glitchy or percussive feel. 
When we turn up the woggle size, the VCOs drift out, and they don't cancel each other out as much. And thus there are fewer of those glitchy dropouts. For some great musical use of the Wogglebug audio outputs, check out the video that Traversi recently hosted on our YouTube channel. I hope this gives you some good insight into the inner workings of these somewhat unusual ring modulator circuits. Thanks for watching and happy patching.